Hello and welcome to The Wendell Effect. My name is Brandon Wendell. I'll be your guide and host as I look through the markets and give you my analysis and interpretation of today's charts and what might be happening for the week to come. So just a quick reminder before I get started, just a reminder, we are not registered broker dealers or investment advisors. We're going to take a look at this information from an educational standpoint only. Not telling you to buy, sell, or hold any particular securities or giving me personalized recommendations. Uh, the markets are possible. Uh, sorry, there is risk of loss in the markets. It's always a situation. No matter what we do, we can never eliminate the risk. We just have to manage it, and we are not subject to trading restrictions. So we can have a position in a security or initiate one at any time. So, please stay in touch with me. I do take requests, and uh, if you got some securities you'd like me to talk about in the future, hit me up at brandonwendell.cmt at gmail.com. You can also follow me at TraderBDub on Twitter, and that way I can stay in touch with you. I do tweet pretty much every day about the markets and what's going on there. And of course, if you could please hit like and subscribe, and that way that will help me out greatly to be able to continue to bring you this information on a regular basis. So without further ado, we're going to jump into it the week of the 19th of March. And we're going to start off with the equity index futures, as usual, jumping into energy futures, then a uh, peek at the sector watch, what's going on there, follow it up with some ETF analysis and individual stock ideas as well. So for the week of March 19th, for the equity indexes, it's been kind of a wild ride. And you can see by the week finish, we had a doji-like candle where we pretty much closed a little higher than we opened, but for the most part, wild swings in both directions. So we're kind of at the bottom of the range that we've been in and we don't have enough momentum to keep going. So while it looks like it could be a pause, if we do break the low of the candle from this week, next week, and we go below 40 on the RSI, then we should be able to continue and take out the October lows. But what it looks like might happen is we got more indecision and sideways movement that could move us back up towards that 41.8850. Going down to the daily chart, you see much more weakness here. We had our impulse correction, impulse, and hit a target, basically duplicating the preceding impulse, but in much less time. So obviously the bearish momentum is much stronger than it had been. We rallied up, but it only came up to this kind of weak, well, it wasn't too weak, there was good selling pressure. Uh, supply zone, 4,009 to 4,057 on the daily, and Friday saw us move away from that area so it looks as though we should continue down to retest the 3850 lows before we bounce anymore we will get held up a little bit at 4079 if we do try to rally first but it kind of looks like we're going to drop a little first retest the lows then bounce higher by the end of the week looking at the four hour time frame you can see we do have a little bit of selling pressure we had a negative divergence at the end of the day on friday and started to fall off actually not the end of the day beginning of the day friday and that's where we started to fall off. And it looks like, again, we're getting battles here with some buying pressure at the bottom of these candles, suggesting that there, we may not go down very quickly. Could be in for another very wild week back and forth. And looking at the um, comparison chart, you can see that the, we've got a split going on right now. The NASDAQ is trying to rally while the Russell is trying to drop. And the Dow and the ES are just basically splashing around sideways. So a lot of confusion in those markets right now. So taking a look at that bullish NASDAQ, you can see kind of a different weekly picture here. We had a much more strong bullish candle after we only retraced 50% of our last weekly impulse up. So we had that retracement. It looks as though we're trying to move to the upside now to reach out to 13,164, possibly up into almost 14,000 as well, that next weekly supply. Uh, you know, if we try to break out of the prior highs, we need to do it with more momentum. So watch the RSI. It needs to be above 60 for us to reach out and get to that 13,480. Otherwise, as we come up to the prior high, if we don't have more momentum, we'll probably fall back again. On the daily chart, again, not much decision making going on here because we had that high where we couldn't get above 60 at a low, couldn't get below 40. So we're just chopping around. Finally, by the end of the week, we started popping up, indicating that there is bullish momentum that should take us higher. So the next high target, again, is try to take out that previous high here and get up to about 13,164, but we need to see more momentum on the weekly chart for it. On the four hour, smaller picture, got a little bit of divergence where the prices went much higher, but the indicator didn't. So we, we did get a retracement. Might be the end of it, honestly. We might end up seeing some strength on Sunday going into Monday, pushing us upwards towards 13,190. 
So even if we do fall, we do have a demand zone right here at the 38% retracement as well. I don't see us falling down very much on that NASDAQ. It's still wanting to hold up very strong. The Dow, on the other hand, completely different story. With the Dow, we had broken out of our sideways consolidation, our triangular consolidation, retested, which we normally do, and then continued down. Just like the ES, we actually had that indecision, but this one was a little more bearish. And the reason why, it's mainly driven by the banking sector. When you look at the weightings of the different indexes, banking and finance has a much more, a, a much, much more influence on the Dow and the Russell than it does on the other two indexes. So that's why we see more red here. But if things that are, you know, if things are contained, and not only that, but the um, it, the traders and investors believe it, it's going to be contained, and we get a little rise in the financial sector, then we should see some rallying going on here. If not, we could drift a bit lower to the weekly demand at 30,278. Key will be watching momentum here as well. We need to go below 40 to go lower, especially if we break the low of last week's candle. Looking at the daily chart, it doesn't look very bullish. You know, we got this drop we're basing right now that usually leads to continuation. We just lost a little momentum, but overall, this is suggesting that this week we'll try to drift down towards 31,210. So while the NASDAQ looks like it wants to rally, the ES wants to go sideways, the Dow wants to go down. So again, looking at a little bit closer time frame here on the four hour, it looks like we're already sliding down and it's gonna be a bumpy ride, but it does look like we will get down towards that 31,210, maybe break that 31,000 as well. And finally, the Russell showing a lot of weakness as well, big red candle on the weekly, but we still haven't broken our sideways channel yet. And we also are still above 40 on the RSI. So just sideways right here. A lot of weakness, but not really breaking down as of yet. On the daily time frame, you can see that we did hit, almost hit a projection. We have a positive divergence, which is suggesting we're gonna get a small rally, although it may have died off already. Looks like we had that big red candle on Friday trying to push prices downwards, but um, yeah, it's kind of tough to call this one because it's been so choppy. We're near the bottom of the range. We should just go sideways, but it will likely follow with whatever the Dow does, not the NASDAQ. So on the four hour time frame, looking pretty bearish. We bounce off an area of supply. Even though we lost some bearish momentum, we are still just pretty much drifting sideways. So not a lot of momentum here. We probably look elsewhere for better opportunities. So moving in for other opportunities, we can look at the energy markets now and turning our attention to the May contract of crude oil, the weekly chart hit a demand. We dropped down right into that demand zone and you can see that we just broke below 40. So that's suggesting that not only do we break down, we might be able to keep going down. So watch out, we might get a little bounce first before we drop lower. You can see that on the daily chart, there was some consolidation really. I didn't draw it out. <coughs> And we did leave a little bit of supply right here. You got drop, base, and drop if we do try to rally. But otherwise, it looks as though this is going to be pretty bearish again. Continuing on for the next week, we may only be able to retrace a little bit further up to the 7170 area, maybe just up to 72 even. But overall, this is very, very bearish and likely to continue down after a small retracement. On that gas, we had a little bit of life left for two weeks and then dropped again. We're probably gonna end up seeing some new lows, but we're losing momentum. So it's not gonna happen very quickly. You can see we have an impulse correction. We're trying to impulse, but you see the angle of attack is very shallow. So it's gonna take a long time, maybe several weeks to months before we can get down to this one and a quarter, if we can even get there. We may just flatten out, start to move a bit sideways, which is kind of what I'm seeing here on the daily chart. On the four hour, really, we could continue down a little bit to 2.3 before we bounce. Um, I didn't mark it off, but this may be a little bit of supply right here, back at about 2.7. Then I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen for a week where we bounce off the 2.3, come up and finish around 2.7 and just really do it slowly this week. Moving on to gasoline, we broke the small uptrend that we had. We're not really strong in the downward direction, but we did make lower highs and lower lows on the weekly chart. So going down to the daily time frame here, you can see that we did crash down into daily demand. We have bounced and gone back 38%, but with that indecision on Friday, it looks as though we might be ready to continue our move down to 2.25 on gasoline. 
So we might get a little bit more selling pressure kicking in this week, even looking at the four hour chart, if we can tr still try to rally it anymore. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but we did lose a lot of that bearish momentum. You see that divergence right here? Actually, you know what? This is suggesting a possible reversal trend because you have a positive divergence followed by a low being put in that didn't go below 40 with the closes. So we could see a little bit of life here, but again, I don't think we're gonna get very high uh, it could be a short-lived rally up to 2.55 or 2.63. And, you know, that takes us pretty much right into this daily area as well. So that's kind of what I'm seeing is if we do get a little bit more life in gasoline, the real key would be if we break the four-hour green candle right there, the high of that candle, that'll establish that as a low that did not go below 40, and we will get that rally probably up to this 2.63 area. Heating oil is also in a bit of a channel to the downside. You're seeing a lot of weakness. We failed to make the top of the channel right here before we started drifting downwards yet again. And I don't think we're gonna stop kind of drifting back and forth until we hit this 2.23. So looking at the daily chart, you see we're on a little retracement right now, but we came back towards the origin of the selling pressure. Um, it does look like we might be done with the buying that was going on and we should be able to continue down next target by the end of the week is probably about 2.29 i do see us being able to get down there so moving down to four hour time frame if there's buying pressure i'm looking to sell this 2.64 to 2.66 i see that area it might even be a little wider honestly i probably could have included all three of these candles as basing so maybe a little lower here at about 2.64 to 2.66 for the short targeting as i said that 2.29 on the daily projection. So that's what I'm seeing in the energy sector. We're going to take our turn now, look at the stock market, and what the heck's been going on there. Well, for the last six months, it looked as though we were trying to rally. You know, typically with sector rotation, when you're being led with technology, consumer services, and industrials, that's the beginning of a bull market. But we didn't really, we kind of skipped over discretionary. So it's not legitimate. It was just kind of a quick buy. And as you see over the last month, things, things are starting to change. So as of now, they are falling down, those sectors. Technology is still leading, but we're also seeing a little bit of strength in the safe haven securities at the consumer staples, healthcare, and utilities. That's suggesting that the markets are going to be in it for a little bit of turmoil and not necessarily dropping. Remember, the NASDAQ wants to keep things up, but a bit of choppiness and sideways movement. So be very careful, very selective with your, your trading ideas. Looking at ETFs, the ETF for the SPY, uh, pretty much the same as the you know the futures here. You can see we were trying to make new highs, started falling off. We have a topping tail in the last candle, but a little more bullish pressure. Just looks like it's going to go sideways. You know, we retraced 50% of our overall downward move that we started in 2022, and I don't think we're going to retrace much more than that. Even if we try to rally, we do have overhead supply we'll run into here at about. I guess it's about 425, 430. So looking at the daily chart instead, as we rallied up here, we got kind of a bearish harami possibly. You know, you got the large candle with the small candle inside the body. So if we break down the lows here, we should be able to project down 379 or 369 as our downside target on the daily time frame for this week. So we're seeing bearish pressure coming back in. We definitely can't get the buying to push us much higher. With the queues, of course, totally different picture. We have a lot more buying pressure on the queues, and you can see that we did our, our retracement, pushed down a little further, and it looks as though we're actually trying to pop to the upside. I know I have a projection downwards, but really that's only if the other sectors start dragging everything down. If technology stays strong as it did for the last week or so, then we could actually break upwards, and our next target really should be this area supply, about 325, 327. And if you know we have enough strength, we could move all the way up to about 360. So keep an eye out for that. Daily chart, again, uh, I do have the projections upward here. Again, I've got the 318. We do have 326 as a possible supply. I was looking at the weekly longer term right here. But short term, again, we're not going to get up to that 349, 360 area very quickly. It's going to take weeks, months, possibly. But here on the daily chart, again, we've already started projecting upwards after we did a nice little retracement. And we do have 318.15 as a possible target. 
there's not really supply, but there is definitely good selling pressure there. And then we do have a supply zone a little higher at 326.79. So that's where I'm seeing the NASDAQ trying to rally up to and pausing by the end of the week, right at about that supply at 326. The diamonds, again, going back down. We're up, we're down, we're up, we're down. It's just back and forth. And you can see on the weekly chart, selling pressure, not enough to really start blasting to the downside, but also not, at, you know, it, we're, bear, we're bearish, period. You know, lower highs, lower lows. So we're likely to keep drifting downwards there. Looking at the daily chart of the Russell, I'm sorry, not the Russell, the Dow, diamonds, looks like we will keep drifting down and possibly hit that 305 area. That's our next real demand that we have on this ETF. Now, we're not going to go down there straight fast. It's going to be choppy, unfortunately. You see the colors of the candles last week. Green, red, green, green, red. We can get a lot of those mixed candles and back and forth choppiness before we hit those lows. And finally, the Russell, again, it's working its way down towards the bottom of the range. It's a very weak index as well. Uh, honestly, this is a better measure of the economy of the United States because it's got not as many multinational companies. You know, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow, they have multinational corporations inside of that index. Here, we've got smaller companies that mostly do business within the United States. It's the 2,000 smaller companies of the Russell. So this is a better indication of how the American economy is going. It doesn't look good. So you can see we got lots of selling pressure and we're likely to continue down to the bottom of the range this week. You can see that we might have a little bit of a pause, but we've got enough bearish pressure to get through this demand zone. It's just pausing there, that's all. So we're going to go ahead and take a look back at some of the trade ideas we've been following for the past weeks, and i got a couple new ones for you as well. Looking at the equity markets, EVRG unfortunately never rallied up to our entry spot and has pushed down past target one. I'm going to have to give up on that one. It was an idea that obviously it was the right idea because the markets did drop. It just never let us in. And that happens sometimes. CF, on the other hand, did let you in. Hopefully you were able to take advantage of that. You saw it come up into the supply zone and dropped. It was I was hoping for a second chance. Doesn't look like it's gonna happen though. I thought it would pull back to this 8280, but it did go past target one and it's on its way to target two. So make sure you adjust your stop losses if you're in that one. SNPS also did give us a second chance to get in and held above the stop loss just barely but it did and we had enough buying pressure to propel us halfway to our target so if you were able to get in on the second chance here then you should be moving your stops up at this point we you know however you trail your stops because we're already halfway to the first target which happens to be 394.71 and then ultimately 418.54 oops went too far there slumberjay that was the other really successful trade Sorry, my dogs are going a little ballistic. Some barking dogs in the neighborhood. <laughs> anyway, target one was hit, target two was hit, and I'm happy to say target three finally hit as well. So we got all three of those winners there. It was a really good trade. Hopefully you're able to take advantage of all that. The only sad thing was it didn't come up again to let us in. It did actually hit this area, which was a little bit lower of a drop base drop supply. But anyway, we'll find some more like that, hopefully. And finally, RSG unfortunately never got down in our demand zone it did hit our target however if we do pull back enough this may become a new demand that we could use right here 128 i'll keep an eye on that i don't know if it's going to come into play this week or not usually once we hit a target i usually give up on the trade if it didn't let me in and Citigroup was also a trade opportunity we were watching unfortunately it hit the targets without hitting the entry so that too is one that i'm giving up on <laughs> sorry Dogs barking, hang on. Okay, a little pandemonium with the dogs here today. Uh, anyway, getting back to another trade idea we were following was CBOE, and we got entry on that one. We also see that we are well below 60 on the RSI, so entry was possible. Don't chase price if you missed the entry, okay? You don't want to get in with it, you know, opening up down around 122 or something and have too much risk on the trade. But if it does open somewhere near this zone still, there still may be an opportunity to get in on Monday. And then our targets, as you can see, are the untested portions of the zones. Well, untested portion of the upper zone, then we have the second zone as well. So for some new trade ideas coming up this week, we're going to be looking over to LKQ Corporation. And looking at the last 10 years for basically the 19th of March and 24th of March, just this one week, 82% 
annualized return to the downside, the average return is two, uh, 2.31%. And you can see the last 10 years, every single one is one. There's been 0% winning trade. So everything went down. So high probability. So we want to see if we can get in on this short. And looking at LKQ on the four hour time frame, we got a nice shorting opportunity at 57.16 to 57.76. Place a stop wherever you'd like above that. I just have, I threw it in at, at uh, 57.96, but you don't have to keep it that wide. But however you want to manage your risk, place your stop loss there. And the target number one is above demand, target two above the next level of demand that you see on the chart. So just waiting for that to rally up. Key thing to look, keep an eye out for if the RSI is above 60, do not enter the short if you're in the supply zone, because if it's above 60, supply is a lie too much bullish momentum, we don't want to take the short. So we want to make sure that when we rally, we come into that supply zone with just enough bullish momentum to get us there, but not above 60. Next, I have TXT, Textron Inc. And this has gone down for the last nine out of 10 years. Average return, not a huge return, but annualized is pretty good. So hopefully we get a nice move down here. And looking at the four hour chart as well, you can see we have an area supply possible for entry. 72 and a quarter, 73.33. I'm looking at the stop at about 73.40. Target one is, they're both Fibonacci projections, 66.18 and then 62.43. And next we have General Motors. And for the last 10 years, nine of those were bearish with an average return of 1.85% to the downside. So this looks pretty good as well. Taking a look at GM, this is on the daily chart. We actually are already near this area of demand and possibly bouncing from that. Hopefully we get high enough that and get short here at 39.42 to 40.01. So it needs a pretty good rally first, unless there's some sort of supply that you can find on a, maybe a one hour or four hour time frame. And then the targets again are projections from wherever we, we retrace to. So if we don't retrace back to supply, but we end up hitting a zone somewhere at 36 or 37, then you'd want to go ahead and adjust and project from there down to get your new targets. Let's see if I can show you an example. All right, so here I am on the daily chart again looking, and if I drop down to the four hour, oops, wrong button, sorry. If I drop down to the four hour time frame, and again, we don't really have any great supply. We do have this little drop base and then the gap down that could possibly cause a little supply at 36. If that were the case, and that's where we have to enter, then you would just adjust your, uh, the, um, projection there, part uh, point C, and you would have new targets to the downside. That's all. Or if we go down to a 60 minute, there actually is a little bit of supply right here as well. Not necessarily the best, but not bad either, actually. You have rally base and then drop right there. So we would be adjusting both the entry stop and the target, depending on where it comes to. And there we go. Now the targets will be looking more like this. Target two around 2621. Target one about 2935, that area. And of course you place your stop right above that area. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this demand so you don't get confused, but there it is. That little bit of 60 minute supply might give you a better opportunity for the trade. So going back to where we were, there we are. The last one I think it is, is VTR, Ventos. 100% of the time, it went up. So if the markets do show a little more resilience and bullishness, we do have from the 19th of March to April 8th, 100% winners the last 10 years with almost 9% return. That's pretty good. So looking at VTR in the four hour, I actually had this as a short, it's supposed to be a long, but you know what, the charts, hey, the charts don't lie. This is a nice downtrend. It looks as though we're gonna end up rallying into a little supply here even though 100% of the time for the last 10 years has gone up, we're actually looking at, there's no demand right here. At least nothing significant. Maybe, you know, rally, base, 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 rally. We could possibly look for long. Whoops, let me go back. And we do have one more trade after this too. But if I go into VTR, there we go. And go to the daily time frame as I was looking at. Instead of looking at the short, we could possibly look at the long opportunity there. I'm oh, sorry, it was on the four hour, not the daily. There we go. And what I was seeing is it's not the best looking demand zone, but this may end up becoming something right here. You have rally base and then the small rally. It did work once. 
So perhaps that does become a buying opportunity. This kind of changes everything where instead of a short, we're obviously looking at the long targeting just before the supply zone here. And let me get that adjusted. There we are with target number two. I would say well, right near the highs, to be honest with you. We don't really have any other great supply there. So could try to hold on for a bigger win if that's the case. So we do have either short opportunity if the markets are weak and it rallies and dies off its supply first, or if it does bounce off this 42.85 and the markets are strong, we could get a bounce. The problem is we got way too much bearish momentum, both on the four hour and here on the daily time frame. You can see we're very bearish. We would need a divergence to really give us any kind of hope for a rally anyway. And finally, my last trade idea was Hess. 100% uh, of the time over the last 10 years, we have rallied there. And taking a look at this trade, we have a couple of demand zones we're coming down into right now. Again, we have a lot of bearish momentum. So once more, we need a divergence or some sort of signal that we're not going to continue to go through those demand zones. So if we come into demand, if we don't have divergence, we've got to be above 40 on the RSI, plain and simple. If not, it's going to fail. So keep an eye out for that, those trade ideas. Hopefully you enjoyed this information. It's going to be useful for you for this week. If you have any questions, again, you got my email here, brandonwendell.cmt at gmail.com. You can hit me up on Twitter as well. Please follow me there for more information. And please, please, please hit the like and subscribe button. I really appreciate that. You'll be notified when new videos come out as well. And if you got any questions, like I said, you've got some contact information there for me. Thank you for being here. Trade safe, trade well. Take care, everyone.